Well, it's that time of year again for a mountain of firewood and a mountain of truck jobs. The heat system is pretty well where I need it, but there's a couple other high priority jobs that really have to get done. First on the list, new clutch and flywheel. Well, here we are. Dismantle went quite well. The reason I'm doing this job is because I've been dealing with a really bad clutch shutter once the truck is up to temperature. So I'm assuming hot spots or something on the flywheel. It's very manageable on takeoff, but when I'm downshifting, it can get really violent and I'm actually worried about twisting the drive shaft. So I'm doing the entire kit, not just the clutch, but the flywheel as well. And the flywheel's out. We're getting our first look at it right now. And it doesn't look great. You can see some bluing on here and some spots that are, you can feel with your finger. I don't know if they're high spots or hot spots. I'm not an expert at this, but certainly something is not riding 100% correct on there. The other thing I noticed, the new flywheel that came in the Luck kit or the Luke kit, uh, the ring gear is on the opposite side of the flywheel. This ring gear, I can see the starter has been barely grabbing the side of the ring gear. The new kit came with this weird spacer. It's actually for the starter so that it moves the whole starter back about half an inch, three quarters of an inch. So it lines up with the new ring gear placement. So if you're ordering a luck kit, that's what that spacer is. The clutch itself looks not bad in my opinion again not an expert i compared it to the new one and they look basically the same this is a relatively new clutch this nv4500 they have that uh, bad problem with the fifth gear slipping off so this has been rebuilt and at that time we got the new clutch put in and i don't know if something was installed incorrectly or what happened but that's when this issue began the pressure plate all the teeth look good, but on this side, you can see again, major hot spots or high spots. And with your bare skin, you can feel it. It's very obvious actually. Throat bearing, roasty. That's a problem with the 12 valve. Any part outside the engine that's screaming for help, you're never gonna hear it. Finally, you'll notice with this old flywheel, the pilot bearing is totally gone, completely. Just the outer race is left in there. That's just a little needle bearing, which to me doesn't seem like the best option for a pilot bearing. But what has happened is that's actually gouged up the output shaft on the transmission. So the new flywheel did come with a new needle bearing as well as some bushing options, brass bushings, but that doesn't seem like a good solution. So I've decided to upgrade to the South Bend clutch. It's another $400 on top, but it's a far superior product. And the pilot bearing is actually a sealed roller bearing. So if you're looking at doing this job, just something to think about, it's probably worth the extra 400 bucks just to go with the South Bend right off the bat. Anyways, let's get it installed. Oh, I think we're there. I think that's on the spot. Yep, if you want to reach up there and see if you need it. Bolt oh, started. I think we have to slip this whole thing up in there. Watch yourself for a second. I just want to get this. 
Yep. Just a little bit more. Okay, that'll be good. Okay, one more quarter. That should be it. Reassembly went well. It's basically just the reverse of disassembly. There is some torque specs, so do your research ahead of time. I did notice my transmission mount was looking pretty nasty, so put in a new one, it's only 36 bucks. That was good. The other job that was really high priority this season is figuring out what the heck is going on with my front end. I have this terrible cupping issue and the entire front end is brand new just roasting these tires. I think our front end issues are going in the scrap pile with the old control arms. I didn't film this job because it turned into a massive nightmare almost immediately, but I'll run you through it. These were completely seized in there. This is stock from 95 and the rubber is in not terrible shape, but certainly not great. I don't know if it had play or if it just wasn't allowing things to move correctly because these were so friggin' seized in here, it's not even funny. The bottom one I did have to cut off and you have to cut through this rubber bushing. And right when I was finishing getting through the bolt, caught the bushing right up through the brake line <laughs> with the zip cut wheel. So not the funnest job I've ever done, but let me tell you, immediate improvement in drivability. There is no shake, there's no pull, runs perfectly true down the road. So I think that's going to officially solve our front end issue. Now a lot of people have been asking where I'm going this summer. You guys gotta have some patience, geez Louise. But I'll tell you, it's gonna be awesome. And it involves a lot of dirt road driving. And in the Chilcotin, I was noticing that even with these long johns on, my tires were throwing a lot of rocks up onto the rocker panel and door and the boxes. The truck's in great shape because it always had running boards before. So I thought with all the dirt road coming up this summer, I should really make sure to put something on here to save the truck and the boxes. So talked to my good buddy Sash at SK Customs and we built some running boards. The last job was supposed to be a nice easy one. It's not looking like it's gonna be an easy one. I really wanted to identify where I was leaking oil from and I was hoping it was just gonna be vacuum pump or something like that. It's not. Looks like we have a blown head gasket. We got really lucky. There is no cross contamination. There's no oil in the coolant and no coolant in the oil. It's just pushing oil out the front and maybe out the side or maybe I have to deal with a tepid cover gasket as well, but we'll cross that bridge when the time comes. So that's my unfortunate news and it's kind of gotten in the way of some further travel plans this winter, but it's got to get done because this summer we're going so remote, you guys, this truck has to be rock solid. So let's get into it. Every vehicle I've ever owned has been a naturally aspirated gasoline engine. So throughout this project, I've had to learn a lot about diesel, injection, and turbos. I'm surprised to see how much dust has gone through this engine. Look at that layer of dust on there. Allow me to tell you a little something that I hate. Not that you asked but I hate draining a radiator because I can't seem to do it without making a really big mess. Holy smokes, you guys. I can hardly believe it. Look at me go. 
massive success. Whoever's been driving this thing, just hitting rocks maybe. Have sustained an injury. Whoops a daisy. Just about lost the tip. <laughs> Back in action. If anybody asks, that did not happen removing the windshield washer container. A little bit embarrassing. So there's a bunch of parts of this job that there's a very specific way to take things apart and put them back together. This is my first time doing it, so this is not going to be a tutorial video. I'll walk you through the way I'm doing it. But if you're doing this job, there is some great videos online already. off last night pretty much in the point of where this head's ready to come off I'm going through the same type of procedure they recommend for install on the pull just cracking all the head bolts right now so there's 26 of these things this is the one that goes through the rocker pedestal these are the ones that go right through, let's just call it the center. And then that's the exhaust side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label every single one of these. Everything comes out and it's gonna get placed in a spot where it will not get mixed up. And then it goes back exactly the same. Nothing's getting mixed up. That's because there's nothing wrong with any of it, but it all wears kind of individually. So you want to put it back in the same. I have these little punches. Just label them one through six. You'll notice cylinders five and six are tucked way underneath the firewall. So to get your bolts and rods out, there's actually plugs underneath your windshield wiper cover. And then you can pull them right through. I don't plan to add any more power to this engine, but I am doing the upgrade to head studs instead of head bolts. The thing about going to head studs is the rocker pedestals need to be milled down because with the head studs, they protrude further and there's not enough clearance to get your valve cover on there. I know some people do um, just dremel out the fins on the valve cover but I think this is probably the better way to go personally. Just trying to be super organized with everything so it goes back in the exact same spot. And now this head is ready to come off of here. I'll get things prepped and then give the Faj Mahal a phone call. He'll come down and give me a hand actually lifting this thing. Hey, I'm ready for you here if you got a moment. Okay, thanks. Could you go another inch and a half forwards? Yeah. Okay, that should be straight up. Okay, keep her going. There we go. Okay, now let's start going back a little bit. Up. And back, keep going up, and straight back out of here. Oh, that cylinder's good. I've been stressing about these cylinders. Just a bit of carbon in there, no wear. Oh yeah, it's new. Yep, that's great. Enough to 
This block is in immaculate condition. I didn't expect any big surprises because it just runs so good. But this thing for, with 334,000 kilometers is like basically brand new shape inside. These 12 valves are notorious for going well over a million miles. So I think that'll be the case with this one if I can take care of it. This is the time to do, to get this head, this top end, basically to brand new condition. So here's a basic rundown of the plans. The head I'm taking to Prince George to get decked as well as new valve seals put in it. The turbo has been sent off for a complete rebuild already. I've ordered all new injectors and a billet tappet cover, but when this thing's back together, it should be rock solid for a, probably another million kilometers. Can you believe it took a company 16 days to ship this one part from Alberta to British Columbia. Friggin' joke. But it looks pretty rad. Billet, tap it, cover. The only specialty tool needed for this portion is this little guy. This is what pulls the injection pump off of the timing gear. There she goes. Okay, okay, here we go. And that is your injection pump. This cover may have been leaking just a little bit down in the bottom here towards the front of the engine. Other than that, it's not in terrible condition, the seal. I mean, it's pretty, pretty solid, so the countdown was on. Happy I decided to do it, but I think the vast majority of our oil was coming from that head gasket. So this tappet cover, I'm not entirely sure what to think about this. It has these two out ports right here. That's for your crankcase pressure. And the stock one has this line running down. Apparently the new one doesn't need that because there's some sort of baffle in here that collects the oil. So I don't know how I feel about that design, but it's a nice piece of equipment, that's for sure. This will fit trucks from 89 to 2002. From 98 up, of course, is the 24 valve. And in the hardware comes these little studs and spacers. That's from 98 to 02. That's for the ECM mount. Not necessary on this truck, especially because it's uh, computer deleted. Holy smokes, would you take a look at that thing? My engine hardly knows what to do with something so shiny. My rocker pedestals have come back from the machine shop. They're looking good. Let me grab a different one to show you. This is what the finished product looks like. They just took off that amount right there so that the studs and nuts can fit on top. I'm using assembly lube on Pretty much everything. I don't know what needs it, so everything's getting it. Easy peasy. Five more to go. Couple of neat things about a 12 valve Cummins. When you put the injection pump back on, it has to be, the engine has to be at top dead center, as well as the injection pump. Down below is a key to help you find top dead center for the engine. On the injection pump here is a key to help you find top dead center for the pump. Okay. Well, <laughs> there is a way that it goes.
That doesn't look great. Nope. There we go. That's it for sure. I think we should get the head on close first and then put a stud through because this is there's no way it's going to be able to sit level to go down all the way. Well, once we get it real close, then I'd start us several steps. Yeah. So that just to make sure that. Yeah. Straight ahead. Yeah, straight ahead. And start. Turn. Yep. Okay, turn. We're nicely lined up there. We just have to be down and in. Down. Yeah, keep her going in. And down. Well, let's get this out of here. Okay. So these head studs come with uh, lubricant. You're supposed to lightly lubricate the threads going into the block and then quite heavily lubricate the threads on top and the nut when you go into your torque sequence. And that's supposed to give you, I guess, a truer torque. Just a typical day at work, lubing and screwing a stud in each hand. <laughs> Had a girlfriend like that once. Just about to put the last set of rockers on. Everything's going together with this assembly lube. And remember that the back ones have to go up through the firewall, the push rods and the head stud. And it's very important, loosen off all of your valve adjusters or else when you torque this down, you run the risk of bending a rod. Everything's officially on, ready to start torquing. Whatever studs you've purchased, make sure you read into the torque spec. The pattern will be the same regardless, but this is calling for three rounds to get up to 125 foot pounds. So we're doing 40 on each one. This is round three now. Yep. Our last critical and somewhat challenging step is setting the valves. The engine's on top dead center under compression and it's kind of a two phase thing. So on top dead center compression, we're gonna adjust the intake valves, which is the front ones on cylinders one, two, and four to 10 thousandths, exhaust on one, three, and five to 20 thousandths. Built, right? We're on to the second half of this procedure and I guess on the second round when you turn the engine 360 degrees that pin won't lock in because you're now on top dead center with cylinder six not one. So I put a pink line on the harmonic balancer and we just spun it around and matched the line. So after the rotation we're doing exhaust two four and six intake three five and six. Coming up on our final stage here, the fuel system. I'm gonna do a very extensive clean on these lines and then put them on and start bleeding. Whoa! Oh, are you ready? Yeah. Engine's clear, none of the bolts up there. One little washer. That's okay. Don't worry about that one. Okie dokie, here we go then. Cranking. Well, 
air's coming out of something. Give her a whirl. Okay, I got my first injector with these front two are getting some fuel. Okay, should we close them or? Okay. Should I be tightening all of them? No, I think we'll bleed on them one more turn at least. Okay, I'm just gonna um, leave them loose yeah. then. I can see fuel's coming out of number three already. If it does start to fire at all, just stop right away and we'll tighten the rest. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Things are looking good. You might want to open the door. I'll tighten these up. Yeah. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Moment of truth. Here we go. What a success. You want to dump your oil right away, and then when you go to really let it run for a while, you should have it outside where you can see really good. And then check for your leaks outside, because the sunlight, you can yeah. see way better than in here. Yeah. The truck is finally back together and running beautifully, which is a huge relief. A couple of little kinks to work out, but I think that's to be expected with a first try on some big jobs like this. And I also had quite a few days of downtime waiting on parts to ship. So I got some neat things done to the rig that have been backburnered since the build series, basically. So next week, we'll take a closer look at some of those things. But I really want to thank you all for your patience. These big engine jobs were not in the game plan going into the maintenance season, but it's things that have to get done. And that's just part of running this old rig. So I'm thankful to have an audience of people that enjoy that side of the business as well so thanks for your patience and most of all thanks for watching everybody giving everyone a business so where the new kids in town a breaking walls blowing bridges and leaving rubble like a wrecking ball i'm going ahead call us outlaws because we tell the Wind's gonna kill ya I Better run for some shelter Cause we're blowing down this house we